All right, Angela. There's a lot of pressure on Angela today. There's people sitting behind the scene, behind behind the yeah, scenes. They're behind the behind the scenes. All the pressure's on. No me. one told you to talk, all Angela. All we just said you have me. a mic. It's on, buddy. It's on. <laughs> so we got <laughs> golf clap. Studio in the back. audience. Studio live right? studio audience. <laughs> <laughs> Applause. Okay. I don't get that at Channel Five. Right. Right. No, we got supporters <laughs> here, man. Nice. We got supporters. <laughs> so podcast Arthur Mondale. What's yeah. happening, Arthur? Welcome, man. Thank so you. good, dude. Thank Thanks. You. Is that a real name? Yes, it is. Okay. I mean, you don't sounds, use like a sounds like name. I say that all the time, believe it or not. You don't use a... your real... Actually, my full name is Arthur Mondale Wright. Arthur Mondale Wright. Arthur Mondale Wright. Yeah. So is Mondale your middle name, or is it two, a split it's last name? It's actually my middle name. It is. Yeah. So it is a stage name. It is kind no, of a stage name. No, no, because name. people think I just magically just made it up. It they sounds very official. Say, oh, is that your real... Okay, is but, this about my last name? Yeah. Or what is this <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get. I'm First, we have curious. to do our awesome. We get a lot of compliments on our introduction. Yeah. Wow. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Two Marines One Mike. As always, I'm Phil, and this is Wade, and we're your hosts. What? Bow, 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 bow. Uh, wow. Oh, I like that. It's beautiful. Be- <laughs> it's beautiful. It's fun, and we're live now, so we get to have like more fun while we do this. Um, especially because there's no more intro music until just the audio version. Right, right, because we've we've just tried the audio to version. That. Uh, so, like I was saying before, we Sorry, do have, viewers. yeah, Arthur Mondale, right? <laughs> <laughs> before Arthur- we dive into this, let's get into our purpose. <laughs> let's talk about the purpose, Wade. Go ahead. Purpose of this podcast is give you, the listener, and today the viewer, information, skills, and tools that we learn in the military and beyond. Buzz Lightyear. That if you apply to the civilian world, you could ultimately, ultimately. improve the quality Thanks of your for life. Holding there, buddy. Thanks for holding on that. Sorry, one. I've had a lot of AT4. Wow. So it's uh, AT4 is our pre-workout powder. It's delicious, by the way. And I've had water and a banana. Bananas yeah. are good for you. Yeah. Bananas are fun. Um, so, Arthur, welcome. Why don't you um, – we'll give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you ended up where you are right now, and then we'll kind of talk about stuff. I mean, it's the physical – or the emotional. Well, uh, the, the physical, physical, I imagine, the, was like an airplane, a car, maybe, but, you know, <laughs> a bus. Yeah, that takes a long time. Um, so I went into media. I was young. I mean, I was 19 when I decided that I wanted to go away, when I decided I wanted to go in the military. And um, I went into the Air Force, and I was active duty right. for a total of five years because there was a deployment that happened to Iraq, and that extended me. Mm. Um, but I, I did a year in San Antonio, Texas, at Lackland. Uh, now joint base in San Antonio. Then I went to Minot Air Force Base. Minot, North Dakota. Yeah, Minot. Wow, I spent um, some time in Minot. Did you really? Yeah. What, what branch? Were you in? I wasn't. I was. I was working. This is in 2013. I was working construction for a company that was building during the oil boom. Yes, like they crazy. Get so boom. North Dakota changed. That's like Fargo. What is the other city? Fargo, Stanley. Yes, Minot. I think Minot was always. Why not? <laughs> yeah. They got a big college, why not state? I went there for communications. So we I was built. On yep. I was on yeah. I was very lucky. So when people say freezing the reason, I say, that's when I learned purpose driven life. I, I didn't look at it as, oh, I'm, I'm in this. Yes, they have a large Scandinavian population. Yeah. Well, Native American too. And Native, yes. Yeah. Because Native we were building a lot on the, on, the, on the reservations. Jeez, I'm like, you have a good, you have a good memory. I, I hadn't been there. I mean, 2002 was when I went. Oh, wow. There was way less there. Of course, in 2002, 100%. then 2013, that town turned rich. Yes, yeah, it did. rich, and they needed it. Everything, hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, but I was lucky that I was three on six off, and so I went to college while I was also working. Um, that's where I learned how to be a better writer. So there was a base paper called the Northern Tier. Sure, the Northern Star, something like that. <laughs> we'll fact check that. And I had to. Write YouTube will do it for us, probably. Columns on that thing, um, like a base flyer. So that, that's where I learned how to be a better writer. And mm. then I left there randomly. I, I say two years. It was really 18 months. Okay. And then I went to Ramstein Air Base, Germany. Interesting. You know? I know a lot of people that were on Ramstein. At this point, no media. Just writing. Because media was different then. Right. Yeah. It, there was no... The internet was still media. fairly new. I mean, right. Very, so right. You, your public affairs specialist was a newspaper your media uh, yeah and, and that was that was your your mos in yes. the in the army army air at this at this point air, air force. force yeah where are you getting army from you i don't know i said it once i only said it once you yeah um, that's it no, all right wait um, maybe so one when i left there i went to ramstein air base germany this would be 2002 
two, April, I was there for two years, got extended because I went, I was part of the first invasion into Iraq in 20, in 2003. Yeah. Okay. Like Angelo was there then. I was in Kirkuk, but we didn't land at Kirkuk. We went to Turkey and then they put us on these cattle trucks and we drove into. Sounds Air about Force. right. You, <laughs> the Air Force I, drove I, I in? in? I got there in uh, 04 for Fallujah. Yeah, I got there was, right after I, the first push. But. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was an experience. Oh, you you got into the Marine Corps in two thousand three, yeah. right? Awesome. Grand old man. All my all my seniors were um, invasion push. First push. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so you went. You were Ramstein. You got pushed over to Iraq, uh -huh. and now at that point, were you doing like in the Marine Corps? What we have is like combat camera. I don't know if we have like. Do we have public affairs? Yes, maybe we, yeah, do? we do. Everybody yeah, we do. Does. Everybody does. The Navy. Dominantly runs it. Most billets are, are Navy. When you go through, um, for me, my stomach's growling. Just excuse me, ignore it. Um, when you go through Fort Me, I was going to ignore it. Now I, <laughs> now I can't. Now it's all I hear. <laughs> you see, the bulk of, of those who are coming out are, are Navy. I don't okay. Know why it's just like that. Um, combat camera, they document what's taking place in hot zones. They typically are based at certain locations and then they deploy out and then they come back to put out mm. the content. Um, public affairs, we work very little with them because we're actually telling the stories and doing the command yeah. information reports. They don't. They, okay. They're just documenting. So now are these where a lot of your reports, like you said, like command reports, command are reports. those being used for like AFI's network and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. So you get it. Yeah. Our forces I, network. Yeah. You, you I get, get it. You get how this works. Yeah. I get it. Um, but also it's to keep those, those families abreast of what's taking place. So that's why most of our stories are featured. Right. They're not investigative reports on the yeah. military. Whatever. 60 right. minutes? No? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I left there and then went back to Ramstein Air Base, Germany. And then I separated. And that's when um, I said I want to finish my degree in journalism. Okay. Where did you finish that? Edinburgh University. Where's that? Pennsylvania. It's okay. It's right by Erie, Pennsylvania. I went there. And, and so I was already thinking smart. I recognized that I could not. So family is both in Pittsburgh, my mother and her husband. And then my father's in D.C. I couldn't go to either one of those cities and be a news reporter. You, you're, you're too young. Right. You no experience. We go by market. Uh, right. The very large markets. Right. So I needed to go to a very small town to get the experience and be able to build my resume. Smart. Get access. So, right. I was 20, 23, 24. Jeez. And I was already thinking like that. So I've always been this purpose-driven life. Uh, every base I was at, I think I was isolated. I was not like the people. And so in those situations, I don't get the press to feel lonely i i think you got to figure out why you're there and reap the benefits right of the place we, you, you said something like that earlier when we were yes, talking outside we were um, we were talking i heard about, it too um <laughs> arthur was saying to us um you know this is really great what you guys have going on here but you know like for me like for you saying this you're like i don't do group fitness like this is a more of like a lone wolf kind of guy and that explains it right because that that was your situation growing up that's where you thrived um did you you're still serving. Yes. What do, what do you what in what capacity now? The same capacity. Same capacity, just you know, higher rank. Um, what is your rank? I'll explain it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an E6 and an E7 billet, though. Okay. I'm the chief broadcaster for the DC Air National Guard. So. Ooh. Do you, yes. So that's why I go back to DC. I'm only in Florida seven or eight months out of the year. Okay. Ish. Last year, I think it was six months. And that's that's in chunks or chunks. Yes. Okay. So I go back to Washington, D.C. on uh, January 2nd because we, we have the inauguration coming up. So my job is, will be the um, to do press releases. Like I told you, we do a lot of press releases for the media. Um, Arthur, I'm going to have you just sit towards us and come. I yeah. Like I'm back on TV. Okay. You don't have so, to. Be. So those right. cameras, right, so, you can you can just have a conversation yeah. with us because those cameras, everything's going to be covered. Okay, gotcha. We're right here. Um, yeah. <laughs> this ain't so, Channel 5. I know. I feel, <laughs> look at the lens. We're okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so I go back up there. I'm the chief broadcaster, so my job is to get the civilian media the inside scoop on what the military is doing. Primarily the military district of Washington, but you have these bases in and around mm. D.C. Yep. And so there, it's a mission. Yeah. Great, we have green zone and silver zone, some zones. Right. Um, to make all kinds of zones executed flawlessly. And so they don't have that kind of access. We do. So that's my job. When it's not doing that, remember that the D.C. National Guard has both a federal and a state mission. It's okay. a territory, but has a federal state mission. So any type of the 4th of July, any Donoff missions, mm. 
we are tied to it. That makes sense. That's, that's probably be the you coolest know, national guard is. to be in. It, it, right. I tell people it is the best national guard, not, not only because I'm in it, but um, <laughs> it's a big part. I, of it. I, it's the mission and the access. I mean, yeah. we're always on the hill. Oftentimes we, we have access to the White House. Um, it's, it's just a really good job. I didn't get that job though until 2016. I, was so you've been there four and a half. Yeah, four and a half, five what years. happened was when I left the military and I got my degree in 06, my first job job, I was a lifestyle reporter in Louisiana. And then when I left there, each on these four, because you market hot. Okay. I, going to media, like you got, okay, if you're a college student and you're watching this, you don't just get a degree and go to CNN. Right. Like, for yeah. some reason, these colleges right here. If you do, you're going to be in the background writing a bunch yeah. of nonsense. Right. Exactly. So you have to hop. And you get contracts. I mean, a, a yeah. news contract will be one year to three year for a reporter. Right. Never been in that country. So I was in Louisiana for a year and a half. And then I um, went to North Carolina, Greenville, North Carolina, WNCT Eyewitness News 9. I was the investigative reporter, which I'm not an investigative reporter. It was, <laughs> it was an awful job for three years of my life where you're basically looking at people who are committing fraud. and oh, I mean, See, for me, that's awesome. Uh, I love that. It was, it was a tough job because there were things that were going on when I was there. Um, the Cesar Lorian case, that is the um, the um, Marine. He was still in the Marines who killed his mistress and buried her body in a garden. I sounds mean, about that right. Was, that was one of the that biggest right. stories that I did. Wow. And he's still this in the Marine Corps? Marine by I think he was still in. Yeah. Oh, he was, still in then. Still, he like he's then. still in then now? He was like, he's not in now. Like, he's a killer. He's that in prison big, now. It was stories like that. And that that's when he's I went in the... Um, yeah. I realized I wanted to go back in, so I did go back in. I went to Seymour Johnson to be an Air Force reservist. Okay. In the same capacity. So, so backtrack to that first job that you had in media. So you, you graduate college, you walk in, and walk us through like what that looks like. So people that are watching that are maybe getting ready to transition out or are on active duty that want to work in media what that's kind of like. So they're not just going to walk in and be on Fox or CNN or MSNBC. No. You got to pay your dues. Also, media is changing. So when I went into media, there was not, was Facebook even operating? 2005. Oh, so, okay. 2000, so, but still, it's client. It's it's not, it doesn't have the reach that it has now. I, I don't think they were tied to, you know, are they promoting information that could be detrimental to our national security <laughs> in the, the election? Right. It, it wasn't there. Yeah. It didn't have that kind of footprint. Right. So, there were more openings, I think, for journalists. As long as you're willing to move in hot markets, you could do it. I, I just don't think it's the same anymore. I mean, there's a lot of media stations that don't even offer retirements anymore. I think it, it's well, more yeah, it's, it's like a revolving door, I imagine, because a lot of factors. But I think one of the reasons probably it wasn't so cutthroat back then as it is now is because they didn't realize the effect that, like you just brought up, that media could have on people's perception, right? 100%. They thought that they were just reporting facts and people did what they want with them. Now they're using it to actually influence. And maybe they were trying to do that before, but I feel like they've really figured it out. Oh, yeah. Now. It's like facts and propaganda. And then at the same time, we're dealing with this 24-hour news cycle. How many more channels do you have now? I mean, so the O.J. Simpson... And access to it. Into, you have access to it all day. Access. Um, 24 seven. And then on the TV side, because I went into TV, the, the OJ trial, that was the first oh. 24 hour cycle. Fast forward like a, a decade. Now everyone's trying to compete and do it. Right. You know what I mean? Until someone else goes on another incident, we're going to stay on this incident. Yeah. If it bleeds, it leaves. <laughs> so all that kind of stuff happened. <laughs> That's true. As I'm going into the industry, there's a certain pool of jobs, and it's as if each five years that pool gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Make sense? Yep. Yeah. So I think I got lucky going into the industry at the right time, um, but I also had to recognize I had to learn the business. There's a business to media, not only oh, content, we've been, yeah, but uh, placement, hiring. I mean, I I went in. I mean, I, I went to college in Pennsylvania for undergrad. But I wouldn't be hired there. I, I realized very quickly right. there were very few black men on television in, in Pennsylvania. Oh, one hundred percent. Is that still is that still the case? Oh yes. If you just, I mean, I don't know. Our audience could maybe just Google 
local TV stations in sure. Pennsylvania. You're not, it, it is, there's not many black males. So, and we've always dealt with that. I mean, I would say even here. Now, I, I, have a, I have a question that might spark a little bit of fire. Do you see that on, on both sides, like news channels that lean one way or the other? Do you still see the same oh, sort of? 100%. I think black men have it hardest, personally speaking. Sure. I think we have the hardest getting in. If you're good, I think you have a job. But yeah. I think we're forced to realize you're going to have to be twice as good. You have to work twice as hard. You have to move further. My colleagues that I went to college with, they did not leave Pennsylvania and get their first gigs in, in Louisiana. Right. I had to. And then when I left Louisiana, I had to go to North Carolina. They didn't have to do that. Right. I can't tell you how many people who, who are much lighter than I am, they stay in the same <laughs> state they're from. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa down the street. That's, and they make a career like that. Now, I definitely think that hurts you long term. I think the demonstrations that we had this year, I, I, I love Well, that's kind of what, that's what I want to talk about. 10,000 right? demonstrations. That, I think it beat the civil rights era. 100%. Had to. I love being a part of it, but I was also culturally competent enough to understand what this was about. And yeah. the many factions that there went you into go. it. You had your anarchist, mm -hmm. but there was good to that movement. Had I not hot Marxism been on the other end of everything, I wouldn't have got it. Right. Makes sense? Of course. I was the one at Channel 5 who said, why don't we have protests happen? Ahmaud Arbery, I think that was the case they got. That was beginning of May? End of May? End of May middle of May? It, it was beginning of the uh, year. Florida, yeah. Georgia line? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know why we weren't talking about it. I was the one who brought that up. And well, then you had – yeah, Taylor was right before that. Um, there was quite a few. I'm trying to give you because I, I I I don't want to say their names and not give them the respect that they're due and give you the timeline of them. Um, George Floyd. I'm trying to understand why that one really that was a straw that broke the camel's back, but I think we were seeing it in real time. A man have the breath taken out of him. I right. Could not watch it. I right. Mean, I remember the email. Yeah, it was out, disgusting to watch. I right. I couldn't physically watch it because I didn't like it, but I definitely thought there there was something that led to that, and I loved the demonstrations that took place. I did not like how the media was having to put um, – they were putting a, a, a something on the front of it, a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. Right. Why did it say peaceful? It's a protest. That, right. That sure. That was going on. And depending on what uh, part of the nation you lived and worked in, you were getting half the story. Right. Well, that's sense? well, that's kind of where, where I was going okay. with this, where – do, are you seeing so now we talked about it being most difficult for a black man to get you know some sort of reporter or anchor job at a news station on both sides of the fence we're talking politics now you know left or right leaning news stations now those same news stations are putting out you know in the incidents that have happened this year putting out stories but at the same time on the back end of what they're doing they're still having to jump through those hurdles right so a station that's just in this case, yeah, so left leaning is talk a hundred percent is talking company, about. I gotta say this: Scripps owns WPTV, yeah, and a bunch of other stations, fifty-two, I think, um, all over the nation. And so Scripps created a equity, diversity, and inclusion program. Love my station. Um, there's a training that we went through. They're to great. Better over there. inform those on staff how to report on these. Social, we'll call yeah. it social justice, right? That's it. And I remember in, in one of our trainings, it was brought up. Why are we saying peaceful protest? A protest is a protest. But because yeah. some people have bastardized it or politicized it as, you know, this is sure. not a peaceful protest. Or even BLM, Black Lives Matter. I mean, my brother, Timothy Mondale Murphy, um, one of the eight people hired by Mayor Muriel Hang Bowser. On. Hold on. Timothy Mondale Murphy, Murphy and yeah. you're Arthur Mondale Wright. Yes, yeah. My mother got remarried. Okay. So okay. All right. Muriel. See? Easy facts. <laughs> He was hired by the mayor of D.C. I Mayor Merrill Bowser to paint Black Lives Matter on 16th Street. Yep. Yeah. That one of the one of eight. I, I so much was going on that I think those of us in the media were tied to um, that you really needed this training to not have bias when you report. You should, if you that makes sense. Mean. Yeah. Yeah, but um, how much of that are we actually are we actually seeing end user? Let's talk. We'll talk. We'll talk major major news networks, right? So See, the thing is, I can't. It's hard for me to talk about the news networks that I'm not a part of, or the, right? Because I, I I'm not a correspondent at a national. Sure. I, I mean, I can give you my perception. Yeah, that, I mean that's it because you're in the you're in right. the business still, right? You have more of a you have more of a knowledge of how those things work and how they're precipitated, right? So even if these these 
reporters and anchors are getting the training to be objective in their stories and in their reporting, how much of that is actually going into the stories that they report? Like how much, how much bias are you still seeing? How much, I guess, mm-hmm. shift in what's actually happening, right? Because like you said, these ch- channels are putting a spin on, uh, you know, all the events that have taken place uh, this year, the Black Lives Matter movement. I think that the problem that I have with some of the major 24 hours is that there's not much time to tell the whole story. So they're getting clickbait. I I think there's a lot of that. I think it's from the headlines all the way down to what you're seeing, you know, in real time. I think that that's a real thing. And I think it takes culturally competent reporters and photographers to really tell the whole story. I I don't know if we've gotten there yet. Um, but then again, I think we were so polarized going into things. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah, I think, you know, talking to a lot of the people at the gym, and we have people that lean left and right, regardless of their political affiliation, I hear a lot of the same things. Like whether you watch the big national ones that are either side of the spectrum, is we're all just kind of sick and tired of being told a narrative instead of just lay out the facts and allow us as intelligent humans or less intelligent to make our own decisions, but that doesn't exist anymore. Well, I don't know how we've gotten to that, but I feel like when you watch the news now, you're just listening to that person's perspective and narrative versus here's the facts, here's what actually happened, and then you could extrapolate what you want from that. Of that. In our conversation, I think Shh. my story is my story. This is my own isolated. Right. This is one person telling you their client. Um, I'm sure there'll be people watching like, but well, I didn't have that happen to me or I don't think like Arthur. Or, yeah, I'm giving you my perception. Of course. I'm going to lay that yeah. out. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but I think if people are watching this in pieces and not just scrolling through. Well, of right. course, it could be the same thing. You're going right? to take away a, a different narrative sure. than what we're putting out if you don't listen to the whole thing. I think, so I think of that's, course. A, that's a reality in 24 hour news cycles. Okay, I agree with that. And then the other aspect that's kind of frustrating because I've never been one to watch any of it. You know, then we got shut down. And I started watching the news because I wanted to know what was going on in my business that is now currently closed per governor's orders. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm slowly becoming my father who's always angry and outraged. And he'd call me and be talking ranting about and raving about like just what's going on. I don't know. What he you're also talking lives about. in Chicago. And he's like, well, why don't you know? Why aren't you watching? I don't want to watch the news because it's, it's like Debbie Downer. And I feel like that is like a big driver it's it's like we're going to show you three really horrific things and then we'll have like one you know uh firefighters it, it bleeds, save leads. this woman yeah, and then it's back then yes if it bleeds it leads dude viewers light but why drama right because controversy i mean that's one of the hundred percent that's it dude and controversy that's- is one of your six pillars that you have to look for to tell a really good story now there are good stories that have their edge of controversy to them I mean, I just just sitting here thinking. I mean, what the was it Haiti? Who had the crazy earthquake or storm that we all went through? Like Europe? this Puerto Rico? Yeah, Haiti? Was that Puerto it? Rico. Yeah, yeah. So for the sure. Dogs, the dogs that were yeah, in. Puerto Rico. There's a bit of controversy to that because it's like in the Bahamas. Yeah, right. But the positive is they bring them to Florida and people adopt them. Right. That yeah. was there when they got off the whatever they got off of, you know. Yeah. So that, but still controversy. Yeah, I I think. Um, it comes down to the bottom line and, and it's unfortunate, but uh, whoever gets the most views gets the most advertising money, money. Right. Right. So it's, if they can't tell the whole story, right. Instead of putting out, I, I would say, this is just, again, my opinion and, and what I've, what I've seen on both, 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 both ways here is if it bleeds, it leads. Right. So let's lead with Blood. the, Blood. Well, well, blood makes grass grow, but let's um, let's it's lead with um, all of these details, even if they're a little bit out of context, just to get that viewer in. They'll watch the segment, and whether or not they go on to read the whole story or watch the whole story I is up say to them. That viewers need to be, you know, more responsible and hundred percent see things that we post. Because I, I mean, speaking for Ch- I love working for Channel Five because I mean, I know in this market we have the most when it comes to everything. The most reporters, the most photographers, the most producers, the largest web team. Um, it's a great station to work for because of the resources. Yeah. Um, and also the diversity of thought. We are all so different at that station. You could give each of us the same story, but it's not going to be the same story. Right. Just, As it should be, right? That's what, that's what I love about my station. Um, we'll put stuff on social media. 
And then you hope that the viewer would click the actual article, not just read the headline and the abstract that gives right. you the two sentence summary um, to really get a better grasp of what's taking place. Right. You know? So I think I, I think what you're saying so is absolutely true. I, part of the viewer, hundred percent. I think I think it's the viewer's responsibility at the end of the day to use their own brain and think critically for themselves. When you see those, you know, headlines or clickbait clickbait headlines, um, no matter what channel you're watching, you know that's that's how, in my opinion, I think that's how the news channels get the viewership, get the advertising dollars, and things like that, so that they have more people coming to their station to tune in and get their side of the story. I think reporters and journalists should be, depending on what you're reporting on, should be objective in in certain aspects and subjective in stories that they cover in, I would say, different. And I don't know where that line is drawn necessarily. I mean, we we always have to be objective, I know. Because you, there's ethics. I mean, you sign policies when you get these jobs as a reporter. Right. That you're supposed to do. But how how vague are, are those policies? No, they're very thorough. They are. They're okay. Very, very thorough. I mean, if you, you screw up, you could be fired. Yeah. Well, we've seen contract. that. It's a very real. It's a real thing. Yeah. Who's I better on know. air, you or Ron Burgundy? <laughs> shifting, <laughs> shifting, <laughs> shifting. Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy is my anchor. hero. I'm really. only a reporter. I'm, I'm, I'm like the low man on the total below. And do you? Does the reporter then want? Is that like the next stepping stone? You want to be an anchor, or that's just not your jam? You like doing the reporting. You know, I've only anchored twice in my lifetime. I've only anchored, I mean, where were those? My boss here gave me the opportunity to anchor twice. Um, here? At West Palm, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I did. Um, it's different. It, you, you definitely need practice. I would love. prompter Because the coloring, it, it's, it's, a, it's white letters on a black. Right. Flat. Oh, yeah. It's very cold. It's not warm. So you We've have been to there, learn yeah. how to look at that. The way I look at a lens, yeah. they don't have that option. That it's a... Uh, that monitor. it's in the teleprompter it's very different right and then you're trying to read and, and make it like you're not reading and then ad-libbing with your anchor um but you also have to look at do you like the market that you're in i mean what's not to like man this is west palm <laughs> okay um <laughs> if you want to stay long term in whatever market you're in then you'd want to become that way you legacy I mean, right you, you are the, the face everyone's used to seeing you that's it yeah but if you're just passing on through yeah. Does it matter? Uh, no. I mean, I, I'm here for the storytelling. That, yeah. That's the reason why I, I, I came here. It was the type of stories that I thought needed to be told. I mean, because there was a, there was a lot of stations on the table for me. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. Milwaukee and Fox. Ooh, I'd rather be down Cleveland. here than Milwaukee right now. Um, I love Houston, Cleveland. Atlanta. I've never lived in Atlanta. I mean, Atlanta. Atlanta's beautiful. I like the pace of it. I love it. I like the pro- progression. Love Atlanta. Yeah, it reminds me of DC. I think yeah. it's very similar. To it is. DC. Yeah, that's a good comparison. Um, so. Atlanta is the only downtown area that I could stand. So we had a, a member here that used to have. She's a traveling nurse, and she would work contracts down here, but she would keep her apartment in Midtown, in uh, like right outside of Piedmont Park in Atlanta. Oh my god, what was her job? She was a travel nurse. She's a, a critical that's care a interventional job. radiology. Really she makes job. a killing. She's down here. Really. Um, she's great. But what she would do is when she was down here, she would let us. Go up there. I've been up there and just stayed at her place. Beautiful. It is. I love, it is. love, love Atlanta. It is nice. But I can't stand downtown Miami. I can't stand downtown Fort Lauderdale. Like I'll go down there for dinner and stuff, but yeah, never to live. Yeah, Atlanta has a nice. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if it'll ever happen. I, but I'm a Northeast guy too. I mean, I feel like. I mean, I went into media at 19. I'm 40 now. Yeah, that's a, um, Wade's the oldest here. <laughs> Oh, you're really 45. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I got things <laughs> out. I really, yeah. But you want to get someplace that you know you, you want to ride this out, you know? Right. I'm a Northeast guy. I just yeah. like Northeast. Northeast. I, I love Cleveland. One of my best buddies from the Marine Corps lives in, in right outside of Cleveland. Yeah. And I go up there. I try to go up there every year. Um, I think he's going to come down this year. Right after, uh, right after the holidays. Send him some photos. Stevie B. Send him some photos in January laying on the beach. Say, how's Ohio? Well, I talked to him yesterday. and um, Ohio. And he's like, oh, it's cold outside. And I was like, it, it's 69 degrees and sunny right here. And he's like, yeah, that's beautiful. so boring. I was like, what are you talking about, man? I, like, I want to go to the beach tomorrow, this. man. I'm going to the beach tomorrow. Cleveland, man. Yeah, Cleveland's going to the beach great. tomorrow. Yeah, Cleveland's like Pittsburgh. Yeah, exactly. I have family in Pittsburgh, too. I love that city, think? too. What's that? Do you like Pittsburgh? I love it. Love I don't it. Like Pittsburgh. I think it's very I like, I like, it is. <laughs> I don't know. I I've just, never been. It is. My my family lives in like uh, Pleasant Hills. Pleasant. Um, what, what else is that by? 
Um, if you say names, I'll know. Um, but that's like where my dad's brother and and, and they live. Angelo's PA. It, yeah, but no, you're from but like he's, Philly. He's, like he's Philly. Philly. He lives in like Philly. Yeah, I like I'm Philadelphia. Philadelphia area. I like Philly. It is. I like, I like Philly. It's, that's trash town, buddy. I, like I don't like it. My first tattoo in Philly. Trash. Yeah. What? Yeah. Franklin Street. <laughs> Tongue Tavern. Franklin Street. Yeah. Tongue Tavern. Market Street's nice. Yep. Ton Tavern, Phil. You should have got a Ton Tavern tattoo. Should have, yeah, should have. Saw Liberty Bell. You should do that. Did you? Yeah, the I rang it. There. Yeah, I like, I like that. I like it, it right here. I see yeah. it every day. Every that day, um, Liberty built up very. For someone that is whether they're active duty or not a veteran at all, that is interested in going in the media. Is there a certain? This, and this is good. We're going back to the original question. We went on like. A yeah, tangents are good, man. I like um, tangents. U.S. geography. One on one. Understand that. Uh, what are you bringing to the table? Have a nose for news. I, th I think people forget. Most of us media. Lots of we buzzwords. Were, we 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 were building our careers before we were on TV. Yeah. Those of us who were in town, I think. So when I was eight, nine, ten, eleven, there was these things called VHS tapes. Right. Wow. The I grew, ones I grew that up with you those. You can record on. <laughs> right. You know, yeah. and if it was missing the square, you would put up, I think, a piece of tape on the back of it. Wade knows exactly you know what, what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I would record the intros of TV shows. Okay. Like, a, you know, sure. it could be a Double Dare, a Clarissa Explains It All, a Wheel of Fortune, Ooh. a Jeffrey, anything. There was the lighting. Rest in peace, Alex Rebecca. The the pacing. These were the, and I would just play them. And I just was like, wow, they're so cool. Any intro. And, and I love the intro to a talk show. I mean, the Oprah Winfrey show, the the Geraldo, the Sally Jesse. I think ours is better than Oprah's. Yeah. I, I Oprah just, sucks compared to ours. Absolutely. That, so I knew I wanted to go into it and just editing, learning how to edit them those together, oh. like record, and and then there was a there post production was a stuff. Too, yeah. That you could, so I learned that middle school. What? Yes, yeah, middle school. Yeah. I learned how to wow. work a camera switcher like last week. See, that's some, and so, I'm still learning. I'm that. saying if you want to go in this industry, you have to understand the mechanics of it, the business of it. Yeah. Before you go into it. Well, there's a lot that goes into this stuff, right? Th like we're is. just sitting here and this is a pretty, I, I would say, slow mo setup compared to probably some of the stuff that you've been on, some of the stuff that we've been on, even. And, um, but there's a lot that goes into this, right? No, Behind 100%. the scenes, before you get in front 100%. of a camera or talking yeah. to a microphone, audio, right? the, you have to know right? the, what's going on, like the process behind it. And also, you have to come already prepared. Sure. I mean, yeah, we we're rambling on, but there's a message here. A hundred percent. Right. To sit yeah. Down no. To have a coffee on a Saturday. That's not what we're doing. No. There are some shows like that that I, I actually enjoy, like I, like Joe Rogan. Like Joe Rogan, I don't think ever has real like conversation topics prepared necessarily. It's like a conversation. It is, and I think that in some instances is is the best way to get information or to learn about somebody. Right. Is is that's what you said. We just went off on tangents. I said tangents are good because yeah, we just learned a lot we did, about we you. Did, we did. Right. And you and I got to like really explain to you. Exactly. Because we're, we're not on a time limit. Right. But getting back to what these young people need to be ready for who are majoring in journalism and prom. Um, you need to invest in an internship now. Even if it's I know it's not gonna be for a credit, because usually they'll want you to wait till your junior, senior year. Yeah. But try to get in the door or try to work with a production house, these people who film weddings that kind of stuff right to get up to speed on the editing process and the writing process and help them draft press releases to sell and market that business because those are tools you're going to need when you start putting together stories i think i think there's more opportunity now i know you said you talked about in terms of maybe what you do has gotten smaller and smaller probably as you climb through the ranks but if you look at so to your point it's like get an internship well now people have their own youtube channels and they're creating oh, tons of content. That. And that's a media outlet Look, too. Yes, yes. But learn how to do that behind the scenes. Yeah. Producing. I love that shit. Yes. So you're there. good at it. I can't tell you. I taught myself everything. Everything. Less than two years ago. Right? We started. We were like, here's, here's how this went down. Is Wade and I were like, we want to start a podcast. And I'm like, all right. Figured it out. Literally trial and error. Started with a $30 so mic. Time. We started with one $30 microphone. No cameras. Not even like I was using this focus right like interface that was a piece of garbage that connected to the computer. You would never get the audio levels right. Well, we didn't have cameras because I was told I have a face for radio. You so did. I didn't want to do cameras. But my my point is my point is it's a lot of of figure it the fuck out. Yeah. Right. And less wait for somebody to come and hold your hand 
through the whole thing and if that's we never were doing happened. that because that's never happened to yeah, me. Yeah. But what I've done as soon as as soon as I kind of got the hang of like what the whole podcasting setup looks like and like how it works is I've I've offered how many times Wade to help <laughs> so it's many a people. Joke. I want, a a I want to start a podcast. We'll hey, help you. come on. I'll help you. I'll, I'll literally do the first five episodes with you. How I'll many people have you. taken you up on that? See, that's good stuff. Yeah, I, I tend to do that with interns. Zero in people. Newsroom. So, I mean, I've, I've ran up to two, which is not a good thing. Um, yeah. It just shows you that there are college students who don't think they need an internship to get their first job. Right. Mm-hmm. You are wrong. You, you should don't um, stick. But I yeah. tell them they need to make a resume reel. So you go out into the field with the reporter and you – grab all their content, all the interviews, all the sound that they had, and then you put together your own version. Yep. And then you're going to put that together on a five-minute, we well, used to be a DVD. Now it's right. like an MP4. MP, right? Yeah, you just so put it together in a and file. you send that yeah. to a new Sling director. Because I didn't, I didn't hire my agent until three years ago. You, you don't get an agent until you've done it for 12, 15 years. Yeah. You know? But when you're first starting out, you're just sending them all over. And learn your market sizes. Understand that um, your New York, that's a mm. one. Your Philadelphia's a four. Your West Palm's a 39. Anything that's a <laughs> wow. 100 to a 210 is what you're going to. Yeah. That's your right. Greenville, North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Your Tallahassee, Florida. Your, those places. There we go. But understand you got to be really ready those to are move. still good jobs, man. Because um, I won't go on the racial tangent again. But all of you who go to FAU, you're not all going to start in Tallahassee. There's no way. Right. There's only going to be one or two jobs there. So, you know, one of you're going to go there. The other one's going to go to Macon. The other one's going to go to Macon, Georgia. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, that, yeah, I love Macon. Market. Macon's uh, awesome. Yuma. Yeah. Yuma, Arizona. Marine Corps base there. He's really small. Yeah. yeah. That's where, and, that's, and then you do that and then be ready to hop to, to make money. I, I would tell a journalist to make more money, you need to hop more. Yeah. That's my tip. That, I agree. I agree. It, it is real. Right. I think um, build that resume. Do yeah. not stay at any station when you're first starting out longer than. Two or three no, years. I, you gotta get creative, man. Yeah. Like one of the things that I did, like when we first started all this stuff, like I, I never did video, I never did social media, I never did audio podcasting, none of this stuff. Like YouTube's still new to me. We're we're learning that now. And what I did was literally, I started a video company after doing this. Was I started filming like all of our shenanigans for Patriot Sports Nutrition, the podcasts, mm-hmm. things like that. But when I didn't have any content and I was trying to get people to like to hire me to do video, I would literally have these guys. And we'd make stuff up. We would we would create our own story. We would create our own our own video, our own storyline. I love that. It's right. Because if you don't have content, make it. Make it. That's make it. it. Make, make it. Make it. What you you said something very interesting before the Savage Saturday workout fuckery started, and it was none of you guys watch the news down here. What 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 do you know? People in West Palm don't watch the news. Younger people to not to. One hundred percent. I'd say you're millennials. No, I mean, I right. just, they, I don't. They don't know. I mean, and I get it. Yeah, it's it's in way different I mean, there's, generation. There's been studies done. These researchers done studies on the decline. Just like the number of people who read newspapers. That's why a lot of them collapsed. Sure. I actually, I went to. You want to know why I went into the DC Guard? I actually took a job as a newspaper reporter in DC. Yeah, for Adams Publishing Group of Chesapeake. They yep. publish a bunch of newspapers in that region, and so um, I tried my hand because I wanted to be in DC so bad. After I did. Five years in North Carolina. Yeah, I, I hate wow. North Carolina. I, you, know, <laughs> you know, investigative reporter at one station and entertainment reporter at in North I'm Carolina. Oh my God. Imagine the stuff uh, that you were talking yeah, about. I know, I know some people like it. Uh, I, I didn't like it. Um, so I was like, I'm done. I'm going to go back to school, get my master's. I did that, but also at the same time to make more money. Yeah. And to make money, I um, was a newspaper reporter because I was waiting on the, the TV stations in DC to hire me. Never did. No. So that. <laughs> See, but then again, the market's at Market 7. Right. You don't go to Market 7 after leaving North Carolina. Right. So learn the market game. I think that's my, my you know, biggest takeaway to anyone that wants to go to media. Learn yeah. Learn the market game. And now, would that be an opportunity coming from, like, a Palm Beach that's a 39 going up to a 7? That's going to be tough. That's a big jump. Tough. I don't know if that's a big jump. It's tough. It's a big jump. It's, it's a really, very large jump. Okay. Anything that's in the top 10 – they're tough. Who's number one? New York? New York. Two, LA? Three, Chicago. Okay. Four, Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always tell people your top 10 markets are if you're in another country, when you say America, the cities people think of. Right. That's right. Your top 10. Yeah, yeah. Miami, New York, LA. And those are the cities that Philly, Chicago. they pay the best. Yeah. They, Miami's know, up there. Yeah. Top 10? No. no. 
I really? Was 19, 17, something like that. Wow. But a top 20 is not bad. Because, okay, we got to be realistic. Everyone can't work in a top 10. Yeah, there's Man. too many people. Right. So you need the top. I think the top 20 is I'm curious. Goal, I'm, I'm surprised that Philadelphia tops Miami. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's surprising. Hmm. Because of the pool. Look yeah. at the placement of the geography. Yeah. Philadelphia, you're getting, you're getting Philly, but you're also getting New Jersey. Jersey, yeah. It's true. You got to look at the, it's the market. Yeah, Miami's city, settled down there all by himself. The market, yeah. Yep. And look how close we are to Miami. I get it. Right. And they're just totally, totally different. I don't totally, watch Miami totally news. Totally different. Totally different. Yeah. And Miami is very good, though. Yeah. Like, is that new Wolf 10? I think so. I yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't watch. The only time I, I started watching the news is one like I'll, I'll do WPTV just because they've been so good to us, and, right. and like we've been on there quite a few times, and they like a couple they actually weeks asked ago, us to come back. I believe that we've been on there multiple times. Yeah, and, that's uh, good. You're good people. We always have fun there. If too. I can have a, a conversation this long with you, that's a rare because I, I usually can't talk to people that long now. Right. Wow. Well, no. especially, well, especially being no, in, well, no, most people just don't. They just aren't. They think they're so. It's an interesting mix here. Yeah. It, it, it's I. Where have you been? <laughs> what right. You been I don't know. I, I go through that. I go through that. I think with a lot of people. I'm very. I, I haven't made friends here now. Well, I'm very outspoken. But welcome. Come here. I, um, um, I, very few people do I meet are well grounded. I'll put it like that. Or well you. traveled. But I think well, it's the military. Military does that. Right. Very right? culture. I was in a lot of are countries you, before my 20th birthday. Yeah. Are you going to come back and suffer with us on a Saturday? I mean, I would. You don't do yeah, group fitness. Oh, yeah, because I didn't work out. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'll tell you a story about group fitness, <laughs> Arthur. Um, you said you said when you came here, you don't do group fitness. And I had the same really uh I didn't think I'd be process. teaching group fitness, so I get it. Yeah. And um, so I, I, I was working at a job doing sales for a company that – not important, but they supply software for companies that do business with the government, streamlines the process of contracting. And uh, one of the buddies, one of the, my friends that worked there was like, hey, you got to check out this gym. It's owned by a Marine. Um, you know, it's group fitness. There's classes. I was like, mm, I don't do that shit. And um, he's like, oh, no, no, it's cool, man. The guy's really cool. He's like, I'm going to call him. We're on lunch break. I'm like, that's weird. Why are you doing that? So we called and, and Wade comes on the phone. And he's like, hey, what's up, brother? Like, you know, being r- really welcoming and stuff like that. I was like, all right, I'll come out. I'll come out Saturday. I came out Saturday. I never left. I'm still here. That was like three and a half years That's ago. That's amazing. Yeah. Cause I did say that. Yeah. But I, I, I also, I think we all get into our, as much as I'll tell people, sure. people get in their bubbles or people. Yeah. I, I, we all do the same thing. Right. I, I could walk. I mean, one of the things I didn't like when I, when I was asked to be on here was how homogenous it looked. I mean, I looked at your social media I said, everyone looks the same. No, I'm the straight shooter. I mean, right. you're not going to yeah. find another one at PT. Sure. Like no, I, in that, that's a turnoff for me. Yeah. Because I'm like, we've gone through a summer unlike any other. Oh, of course. But people still haven't learned. Are you? Are people still having these conversations? Are they having a conversation? Did you even have a conversation? Oh, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I'm turned off by that. I mean, I, I was I just started at a new gym because I left my last gym because it was the same thing. Yeah. I don't like going anywhere where everyone looks the same. It's not okay. Um, yeah. It just, it's a turnoff for me. Sure. Um. So this has been different. And then at the same time, I'm not very, I don't thrive off of affiliation. That's another thing that I picked up. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I like being a loner. I, I don't know. People sure. That into a bad thing. I would say my argument for that would be maybe, if, maybe if it's not for you, maybe it's for some of the, some of the guys that then girls that need somebody like you. True. True. But what did I tell you? When I first walked over, I was like, there's gotta be guys and girls who are like, Right. Who are loners who thrive off of the isolation? Oh, and we because drag I, I those people out. I'd be as good, I, as good at my job if I wasn't by myself. I, I have people who would say, Arthur, how do you come into that newsroom at 9 30? What's your idea? Because I, I basically tell my management, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And it's like, mm, God. that's because one of my days off, I, okay, so I'm telling you, you reporters who want to win awards or be different than your coworkers, you're going to have to come to the table with stories. You need three good ideas when you go to your newsroom. Yep. You don't get them when you're at the beach with your friends on a weekend. You don't get them when you're oh, no. with grandma and grandpa. You just don't. You have to be out in the community. You got to start asking people, give your, what's wrong? What's going on here? So when I first started here at Channel 5, um, six months straight, I was hanging out at the laundromat and at gas stations. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the, the environment. And what like good if stories you saw came today, from that? Right. Oh, wow. I can yeah. well, I can imagine, right? Because yeah. that's where you get people at their rawest, right? You see what's going on. You learn what's going on in their life. Some guy Everybody. storms in. Some guy storms in buying a buying a, a you know a single twenty four ounce or popping a can. You're like, hey man, what happened to you today? 
you know, and you, you get the story. I got to go home. Yeah, <laughs> it was good. But I think that's what you find here, especially Saturday mornings at 930 when we do our veteran workout is one, everybody's welcome always. And that goes for, for the gym, anything that we do, everybody's welcome always. Um, but two is we, we drag some of these people out here that want to be by themselves, but not for the right reasons. Right. Not because they're thriving. Yeah. Because I watched your story. I was good. Yeah. You, you did a story with my colleague. Yeah. And that I was, saw it. Yeah. Two weeks and ago. When I tell you, I was like, she okay. fell short. I, it, we, because we got to change the narrative. I, I don't like when it's that narrative was changed, by the way. A little bit. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. But it, it's a thing. It's of, okay. It still got people's attention. Of course. Right. It didn't get people's attention. I mean, oh, I know. It's a story. Right. Yeah, all stories are impactful. Of course. You know, someone's going to be able to relate to it. That's why it's on the news. Exactly. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made it off the floor. It's <laughs> a real thing. But I think there was other tenants it could have gone into. I yeah. mean, there's definitely people who they don't need the group in order to come up. Right. Does that make sense? That, 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 and that's really my message here. I mean, I'm not saying I would never come. I said it's just not my style. Oh, yeah. But then again, you got to get the whole story. Like, I, I haven't had the best relationship with groups of people sure. in these parts either. I mean, it's you get a pack together, group thing, that's a real thing. And it's peer pressure, that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, now, yeah. at age, isolation, cultural incompetence, oh my God, it's an epidemic. And that's something that I like to bring to the table. Sure. You know what I mean? We could use it. I bring intersectionality. I bring it. And that's on all sides. I mean, we can talk about religion. We can talk about politics. um, Because identity politics is a real thing. I didn't realize how strong it was until I think I moved here. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a big deal. Uh, Right. When are we going to talk about that? You know? So... I, I think that's that's the benefit. Right no, that's and that's good, man. That's good. We cover a lot of ground, but I, I think I think what you're talking about is 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 absolutely right. Where you know identity politics and having somebody like you at, at any station that you're at is obviously bringing that uh, value. Yes, right? but also want to say it takes managers. So my new sure director, right, you could bring something up and get just get shut down. I mean, they were yeah. So I had this interview was it November. For December of 2018, I didn't start the job until March. Yeah, so it takes time to get hired to a TV station. It's not like other jobs. <laughs> you're in. You're there next week. No, TV's not like that. So that's another tip. I'm giving. I mean, we're throwing out tips to these kids. Yeah. Um, but they really wanted me here for a reason, and I have never felt more supported. People are always like, "It's like working at New Five in the gates." I love it. I've never had a more supportive management that I can go to about anything. Right. And I love what happened over the summer. Because, I mean, the uncomfortable conversations, I'm not the one that's afraid to have them. Right. Right? I mean, I'll mm. start them. You right. know what I mean? I, I come there ready to rock and roll. Yep. You know what I mean? But that's my style. I'm a community reporter. I'm an advocacy reporter. And if I could, I think long term, if I could be at – you ever watch CBS News this morning, Sunday morning? Uh, I'm sure I have. Form, long form – you go. I don't watch them. Okay. Like a long, a long form story. Yes. But yeah. only certain – Stations do them. Okay, that's why I was bringing up that one. That, that's a good, a good. Who who hosts it? Well, they I think there's a Jackie bunch. Jane right? Polly now okay. they rotate. Okay, they rotate off, but there's usually a primary. Yeah, but they they, they always seem to lose one after <laughs> a year or two. One goes up. Uh, okay, so a, a PBS. Yeah. You ever watch news stories? Sure, yeah, of sure. course. Those are good. You're talking. You're talking like a like thirty Long to sixty minute documentary yeah. style. It, well, when I say CBS Sunday morning, that's. Uh, Three minutes. Okay. You're not going to be 30. Right. Because it shows 30. Or an okay. But a PBS, yeah. Is yeah. A, that's what I, I'm saying. I PBS. Like that style. Yeah. Or a Vice. Yeah. Vice would be good. I actually had a. Um, I, I love I that stuff. See, that's guys. the stuff that I could get behind right there because you're getting. Like, it's an actual whole story. Yes. Right. You're doing it. You're doing the report that you took. Exactly. Right. Long form journalism. The only thing, though, with long form is, is the money, your salary. Mm. Because you're not working as many days. Yeah, There's and, just a lot that goes into that. So, yeah, And you're writing more. To, to, li- <laughs> to live, there's a reason why you ah, don't that's do interesting. that. Yeah, it's, it's just a lot. That's, there's not, there's that's not career. I'm a, yeah. not so let's talk about... I want to go back to one thing real quick, ahead. though, about um, maybe you'd come back and work out and work out with us. But <laughs> I, I like, no, I like what Phil said. He said, um, not so much for you, but for everyone else. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, you saw us. I mean, none of us actually worked out today, but it's more like just being there for them and then making those connections like, hey, this is Doc Buzz. I saw him get 
picked up by a bunch of them after because they want to talk to them about the VA stuff. So it's like those types of connections and I was relationships. Very thoroughly impressed. It's it wasn't just a workout session. It's not. No, never is. That's what I was saying. So it's like that's like a your, byproduct. See what I'm saying? It's, it's like, like your gas really station that. experience. Yeah. So when when you when you said get around the the front of the yeah thing, um, you had Doc get up there to talk about hey, you really are having a hard time with red tape. You need to call the VA. Right. Then you also had the other gentleman, the Air Force, hiring veterans. Yeah, he's a recruiter. Yeah, he's a recruiter. Great guy. Like, Whoa. Oh, they're covering all the gamuts because I mean, yeah, you can have all the emotional support that you want, but what's paying the bills? Exactly. You see we do that every week, man. So I loved it, and so I mean, so this is something I would I would invest in. At the same time, I saw your trip because we have to do our research. So I went to your Facebook page and I saw you took a trip to Key West, December fourth or December second. Um, <laughs> that was really, you like, like, yeah, you like our jackets. You know, a good time. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it was that. I mean, there's some of us who are here who don't have anyone to go to Key West. What? Key West with. Right. I, mean, I have I've always wanted to go. So that was for was, a veteran organization. But that's amazing. Yeah. Like Reverend but Warriors. y'all need you made an event out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah. That that's um that's a Reverend yeah. Warrior. Have you ever heard so, of a Reverend Warrior? For me, yeah. like that's never because oh, I know so I gotta awesome. drive. Right. It's like four hour drive. It's a solid well, four. Well we do we're do, we're actually coordinating one here in, in Fort Lauderdale in February. February. But like Fort with that, Lauderdale. like for me, that's not my scene. Like that's not my style. That's not my my real style of of camaraderie like getting hammered and walking around because i don't i don't drink right i don't i don't do that i don't like to get rowdy anymore i don't like to do any of that stuff but what a reverend warriors has done is bring people together like we do on a bigger scale around the country i love that. i could get behind that that's okay right? so that's what i'm saying but you have to be willing to do that for other people 100 so you want to see arthur mondale here working out to support <laughs> fellow brothers and sisters i'll come here and really work yeah. out on saturday i mean i have no problem doing it I just, I'm very open and honest. Of course. I, that's just me. As you should be. Right? And I'm immediately, I'm telling you where I am. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah that's I'm okay. Gonna, I'm not going to, I'm not yeah. going to put you on a roster for every single week. Like, where, you yeah. know, I'm like, oh, where's Arthur? But it's, I mean, I think it's good. And you said, you know, you said it before. You're like, I don't have any friends down here. You know, I don't yeah. have, a, I don't have a group and you're a lone wolf, right? Not necessarily that you want one or that you're looking for one, but you have you have a, a home here, right? With us. Thank you. Thank you all so much. But also at the same time, to that viewer who's listening, who's saying, am I wrong for being a lone wolf? How do I handle this? I, I preach purpose-driven life, activated and spiritualized. Have you ever had yeah. you, you yep. guests on here who talk? Have you ever? Is, I've heard you say purpose-driven purpose life. Purpose -driven life. Look Did at you my read? Twitter. Look at my Twitter, Rick, man. Rick Warren? Stephen Covey? Everything. Ah, everything. That's a good book. Everything. Oh, yeah. perfect. Um, I just, I, I, man, like when I think about my life, um, it's just no one thought I would be doing what I'm doing. I mean, I, I was the shyest kid ever. You know, I went into musical theater to try to get out of it. Never really got out of it. Yeah. Um. And then I, I come from a culture that where there's toxic masculinity. That's a really big thing. No matter what tax bracket, because you're like, oh, well, your family's from there. Yeah, dude, you know, education and politics is my family. They, that's right. regional politics. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what they do. But there's, there's a culture. There's still a culture. Oh, yeah. Things look better when you are married with, with kids. You, they just do. You know, bless his heart. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I come from that world, but I... I kind of ran from it. I wanted to reinvent myself. And some of us, it, it'll take doing that, but it's the isolation in it. You'll get good at what you're doing. Oh, I, I agree. Did you hear that? It takes that, time to hone your craft. Yes. 100%. So 10,000 hours, just, right? Man, yep. you have no idea how much I just want to shake people and say, it's okay. Why are you where you are? What are you doing? Exactly. That, well, I, I say that too. And I'm totally behind you with that, right? I spend, I, contrary to what people see, I spend a lot of time by myself. These guys know that. He does. I spend a lot of time, uh, a does. lot of time Definitely alone. Does. Um, and I enjoy it. I enjoy it, right? Because I'm here all the time. We're always talking to veterans. We're always helping other people. Okay, but, but how, how did you end up here? How did I end up here? Like at the gym in this position? In Boca Raton. I grew up here. You grew up here. Okay. Yeah. He went to all here. the high schools. I went to all the high schools. <laughs> I was removed from something. Okay, but why didn't you leave? Because I think that's a- I did. Okay, where'd you go to? I, I joined, well, I joined the military. Corps. But what brought you back? My mom. My mom. So my my uh, my dad died when I was in in 2010. Sorry to hear that. And um, I was cursing Florida even in, in 2012, right before I got out. I was I stayed in California after I got out, and I was like, I love it here. 
my girlfriend at the time had this sick place in Pacific Beach on the water, like on the bay. And I was like, I'm never going back home. Like there's nothing at home for me. And um, my experiences, like my drinking, my, you know, everything that I was going through at the time just started to pile up, pile up, pile up. I couldn't run far enough away from myself. Uh, you know, I moved from San Diego to Mammoth Lakes. I was a snowboard instructor living in the mountains. I moved from there to South Dakota. Yeah. So you've been you've been out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've yeah, been yeah. all over. Yeah, I, I've yeah. lived everywhere. Like, I've been all over the world. You know, I've had experiences at my age that other people have, will never have and probably should never have, right? So at 30, about to be 31, I've got, I've got more life experience than a lot of people that are grown up with kids and kids in college. You know what I mean? That was what, what I think your story needed. Remember so, the story that you did with her? That yeah, of that, course. I didn't have that. Right? That's what that, I just that's let her ask the question, though, too, but it's yeah. – um. It's coming back here not only to, to be where I was kind of grounded and centered, which was home, right? My mom was by herself, um, and she's all I got, man. You know, so I'm, I'm home. Now my mom lives, you know, an hour north in Jupiter. I stayed here in Boca because of all the stuff that we have going on here. But back to what I was saying is I like being alone, and I have those conversations with people all the time, especially the people that are like, hey, I want to start a podcast. Hey, I want to start doing this. Hey, I want to do this. Hey, I, a friend that um, – majoring or just graduated major in communications she got an internship you know she did yeah she got, well she's had an internship for for a while but it's always oh i want to start this i want to do this i want to do this and every time i see she's out partying with her friends so that's the difference ooh, right ooh, is ooh. what are you doing yeah what are you doing right where's your you time going you, where's your time you, going? oh my gosh right. I, I mean there's days that i i don't know i, I wouldn't say i went through a midlife crisis I mean, you gotta put you gotta put work in man made me really think about okay do I really, what am I doing? I know I'm good at this job, um, but also a purpose-driven life. I know there's no one else in that building who can do what I do. Right. But now that's the thing that, that's the culture that our, our lovely boss, Nicole, gave us. Each of us bring something different to that table. And we understand that. So we don't, there's no rivalry. No one's competing. Right. At all. And we're also of the age, once you get the market, anything higher than 50, you're over it. Because you know what you're good at. You know what words you got. It's just a different flavor. But my life is still my job. There is still a day during my weekend that I have to go out and figure out what people are doing. When I leave here, I'm not just leaving here going. Yeah, kick it. Right. No, right. I have to go to Delray to figure out what's going on there. Yep. I'll be going to Boyton. What's going on here? Yep. I, mean, I was going over it in my brain like, all right. Man. But you have to invest in that. So that's my. 100%. You, know, you have to invest in yourself. Right. Student. You have to get out of that party in space. It's over if you want to do this industry well that's what i that's what i I tell a lot of people you know and and you too man like you'll you won't see any of us out and about when it doesn't have to do with being a part of a community or doing something to benefit other people or like grow ourselves right like you don't you don't catch us out like the only time we go out to dinner is monday nights when we have we have meetings like the three of us but you won't see us out hey what are you doing i'm at the bar like you you won't hear that from any of us Hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm out with all my friends. Like, I'll go out with my friends fishing sometimes, but that's because I owe my friends time because Selfish. they've stood by me forever. Right? <laughs> Selfish. That's you a perfect, know? The purpose-driven life. I also say activated in a spiritual life. So I yeah. think you should have something that you care about that you necessarily aren't tied to. That's very important. That's what I say. say that Explain that. Something that, you're, that you care about that okay. you're not necessarily tied to. Hmm. So there's a nonprofit that I give to quarterly in West Palm. Right. That deals with homeless. Man, I've never been homeless. I don't have friends that are homeless. Right. But it was just something that I give to. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can understand that, that for sure. You have no affiliation, affiliation left. Yeah. And then the other thing is spiritualized. That's also on my Twitter feed. So religion has really grounded me. I mean, I don't know how many guests you come on here to talk about. Quite a few. Really? Yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other thing. So Quite a few. Christian, Do it. Yeah. Um, Say it louder. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> um, so i just think if you're if you're following the bible there's certain things you should be doing and there's a passion for humanity that you should have that should just be innate based on the teaching of what the bible says i'm one of those guys yeah no it's great it's great uh, none of us are on twitter but we'll check you out on twitter no no we should probably do that though we should probably we get should. twitter we're on so many yeah. things it's um, like it's tough to... tv stations will make you get on it i didn't have a twitter account until i came to this one okay the, the yeah. evolution of media. Every oh, other station would be Facebook only, and then this one's Facebook, Twitter. Right. Um, where Where are you mostly on? For your like, for you to consume content yourself, you consume Twitter. You consume 
going driving to Delray and sitting outside and people watching <laughs> or that's what I do. I love that. Um, show. I will tell you that in terms of people watching, South Beach is pretty good. Jesus. It's interesting. South Beach? <laughs> people watching down there. Woo! I was down there for the Super Bowl. Well, that's 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 that's, okay, that's, yeah, manu- okay. that's manufactured right, South. Those aren't yeah, South Beach people. That's those manufactured, are, right? Yeah. And I was there for a week and a half. You got to go down there in the middle of the summer when there's not a, a, a you know a pandemic and and you know everything going on, where you get a, just a combination of the tourists, the locals. It's, well, that's a fucking melting. Pot it's there. crazy, crazy. I don't step foot down there anymore. South Point, yeah, it's so beautiful. But it's beautiful too, yeah. and um, I, I think that's why I, I, one of the reasons why I love Florida because it doesn't matter really where you are in South Florida. Obviously, the further south you go, the more of a, a mixture of people that you get. I think, but where we live is is so sought after by everybody, and it's convenient, right? So all the people that immigrate from the islands, uh, you know, Cuba, Haiti, uh, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. uh, everywhere Brazil. South America, got a lot of Brazil. They come here. They do, they do. The only problem that I have with Miami is there's, there's still you have an anti-black culture there as well. I think it's, I mean, this Latino or I'm trying to get the term, the term right. Latino Hispanic. There's yeah. a black, there's an anti-black. I mean, I ran into that when I was there. Um, oh, it's, it's, you I, probably get mistaken as like Cuban or Dominican, for sure. Dominican, Dominican. Yeah. Too. I mean, it was Governor Broward that said he wanted to purchase a territory. Yeah. To send all black people to. Um, I, I found that document because right. I was going over. See, look at this. I mean, as a reporter, when you move into an area, there's things that you pick out. I picked it up when I was going through the airport in West Palm. I'm like, uh, what is going on here? And then just dealing with people. When I bought my car, I remember that. That was a debate. It was, I paid cash for my car. But it was like, it's just a car. Yeah. Doesn't everyone? There was a black man. What? So it was I, it's just like, okay, this place is. And then I started looking at the history of this place. I'm like, oh, okay. I mean, there were things in that documentation that was written on what he wanted to do. I mean, it was really like kill the soul of the black man. But then I've noticed also. When, when was this? What, yeah, what year? 1800s. Yeah. Okay, way yeah, back. You could, I could send you the. And they actual, named a county after him. I could actually <laughs> send you the actual documentation. I would like to read that. Um, because it's really good to look at. Because sure. I think there's some relatability. Fast forward all these years later. Uh, there still is a black population in certain communities that have not attained certain things and they are okay. But at the same time, my issue is there's a majority that benefits from that situation. That's my problem. So when we talk about Florida, I never would say this place is paradise. You, th- those aren't, that's not terms you hear from me. Right. No, you might hear that from some of my coworkers, but there's a lot of people who say it. Arthur, Arthur Mondale. No way. Think that. No, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's interesting, right? Because I just learned something. Like, I didn't one. I didn't know that Governor Broward, what you know, had that. You know, obviously yes, plans. he wanted to break the soul of the black man. Right. I mean, it was it went very deep. Like, they will when they wake up, they will not. Um, they will not look forward to their future. They will not. I mean, it was. Oh, I Dark. mean, it, it, but I sent it to a lot of people, and I think most people just like, like well. Arthur on this tangent because I always try to educate my research. So I send, yeah. I send these mass emails to 154 of them. Um, to get them <laughs> enlightened. And they, yeah. Yeah. Oh so, but that's goodness. what I'm purpose driven. That's right. I'm here for a reason, guys. Yeah. I have a contract. Sure. That will end, you know, and then I disappear. So while I'm here, I'm doing my job. Of course. That's why I'm here. As you should. Yeah. As you should. Wait. Love it. Got, At man. the toward the end of the podcast, not that we have to wrap this up, but toward the end of the podcast. We'd like to ask our guest if we have one, because not always are we this lucky. Today but we do. Today we do. We steal a question from Tim Ferriss. You know who Tim Ferriss is. He's written several books. He likes to reverse engineer elite performers. Okay. Never heard of him? No. Okay. It's good. So, it's good. Won't so sound this like question will really catch you. you off yeah, guard. You probably will. Yeah. Right. I think I know what you're going to say, but at the end of you have each no episode... We like to borrow or permanently steal Tim Ferriss's question. And that is, if you had a giant billboard for the world to see, what would your message to the world be? Man, it's huge. It's hard. a giant that's billboard. hard. Didn't think we were capable of such <laughs> questions, did you? No, no that, that's a really good question. Like, what would be something that... This is actually a question we like to use around dinner tables. Holiday times. Mm. It's thought provoking. Because the holidays don't get to me. Because I I haven't spent a holiday with family in a very long time. So it's dinner table days to me. You know, to me they are. 
Um, okay, for this for this setting, it could change, right? Yeah, it yeah can, for it, right now. Yes, I mean, the first thing I think is probably something that goes back to something I usually say when I'm leaving a base. You cannot put a value on people who genuinely value you. That was something I always mm. said. Yeah. Um, and I think in this setting, that's what I'm feeling. You know, because I yeah. I came in here with my own idea. Mm. I I mean, even in my email, I have a list of tips yeah. on how to survive, how to become independent, and how to thrive in your independence. But I you, you gotta understand everyone's not ready for that. Every audience isn't that. I'm sure your audience, I don't know, I'm just going off what I'm thinking. That's not really what they want to hear. You know what I mean? Sure. So you have to understand your audience. I'm of course. A I, Always. I know my mark. Um, so I think that's the that's the one. Really generally value the people who do value you. Because you, you, you can't buy that. And there's a reason they should they're in your life or should be in your life. And I'm gonna leave it at, at that. I think that's what I would put on the billboard for the world. I love that. I have a shorter version of that. It says when people show you who they are, believe them. That that's that's good. That is really good. But even that is based off of your perspective and your lens. Sure. Because are they purposely showing you this version of themselves? Uh, but what, I'm, what, I, what it means point. is like when people show you who they really are, believe them, right? If somebody keeps doing the same thing over and over again or somebody doesn't keep doing the same thing over again, right? When you get that real good look at somebody's character, believe them, not based on like one day, right? So just overall. But they take the time to get to know them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When people show you who they and are, in, believe in, them. In this day and age, it's very hard. Right. Them. That's what it means. Like when people pull down that curtain of like you're saying, like people could be showing you any type of character. People pull down that curtain, believe them, right? Because you're going to see it. Especially um, online now. Do we want to do mission of the day? We haven't done a mission of the day in a while. Yeah, Arthur, let's do a so mission of the we, day. We have two questions. Well, the first is the billboard question, which I love. And the, the second is more of a, a statement. So we ask our guest to create a mission of the day for our viewers and listeners that they can incorporate into their everyday life, usually in like a morning routine or something like that to help them uh, better themselves. Be something small. Make your bed in the morning. Hold the door open for somebody. You Meet someone what? new. I, this, maybe this will only be for the rest of the, the year. So you give yourself, what, two weeks to do this. But there is a need. There's a real need out here. Um, the weather has changed greatly. Uh, it's been interesting to see a number of tents I live on Flagler. The homeless people in the parks with tents. I mean, just really, when they're asking for money, I don't think they're just out there for crafts and giggles. I really do think they need something. So what yeah. I did was, two days ago, I got a 20, and I broke it down into a few bills. Yeah. And I would just hand them out to the people that I run into, you know, that are staying in the middle of the road. Yeah. So I think that's the mission of the day. Sure. Take a 20, break it, and just give it out. Love it. I love it. I do. It's the holidays. I do the it's the holidays. Thing, Season of giving. That's it. It is. I love it. Wade, final thoughts, man. What do you got? My final thoughts is um, thank you for your time. Appreciate you coming out today. Yeah, My final great. thought would be that we need to uh, get more guests. because We've been doing some solo acts, but it's always nice to have I like someone it, on and, and do like a little bit of a deep dive. I like it. I think I think different perspective. Welcome. Arthur's Arthur's uh, <laughs> one, you know, been able to give us a different perspective on, on things that we thought that we were seeing clearly through our lenses, right? And you get Arthur to come in here and blast all that to shit. No, and I, <laughs> but no, but in a good way, man. Because because uh, you know a lot of us like when we keep having the same conversations between the three of us, nothing changes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So having having somebody um, with a different perspective and a different outlook on things come in and be like, hey, well, maybe did you think of it this way? Um, I need that. I need that. And I, I enjoy that thoroughly. The people that I hang out with are very different than me. Like I'm yeah. making someone go out with me tomorrow. Yeah. Very. I I, I got to pick his brain. Yeah. And that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Different political affiliation, different race. Yeah. I asked him if he's here today. I was like, you should come because he's in the rain. Oh. Oh. oh, wait a minute. Hang on. So look at that. Um, This is on TV, right? Is this even recorded? Yeah, yeah. yeah YouTube. We're on YouTube right now. You're, you're live on YouTube. Bag. Look at my bag. Yeah, so um, I have to give you. Uh, did you get oh, a photo boy. of me? A photo of? Of us. No, we're going to. Yeah. Did you? Look, there's a gift that I was supposed to bring. You oh, man. You okay, so you get it. It's a box of cramps. Oh, <laughs> 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 I was told. 
Oh my goodness. The Marine told me to bring a box of crayons. I don't wow. get it, but here. Wow. That thank you so much. You don't get it? <laughs> wow. I didn't get it. Angela, will you turn that camera on me? Wow. You they look one? delicious. Sure. Mm. <laughs> they look absolutely delicious. <laughs> mm. You shouldn't have. Arthur, you know the way to our hearts. Wow. Blue flavor. Yeah, apparently this came out like after, these are after I was already out. These are very calorie dense. Right. Crayons. Wow. I have to work out especially hard today. <laughs> well, thanks. Come in here. Gosh. Blunt. Who who is this Marine? Um, he's my neighbor. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm, that took a good bite out of that and, one. Uh, he got out in Alaska. Oh. I think there's an air base. There is. Right? Yeah, there is. He worked there. Yeah. And uh, he now works here. Joint, it's a joint base. And so uh, yeah, we, we kind of started a friendship. Yeah. But I, I'm like, we got to do something. So we're going to do shopping and do something that he wants to do. Yeah. Um, but he was like, take those Marines crayons. Yeah. We prefer Crayola, but That's Light Mark are good. These right. are good. <laughs> yeah. So those are just as good. Yeah. I'm curious even, how they even got him. You should have him come like on a Saturday because some of these people drive from Davie, from yeah. Northwest Palm, Jupiter, yep. Wellington. I think it's amazing. Yeah, we have fun. I, I man. think he should. We have I think fun. anyone who needs a boot should just come. Right. It's all, it, break up your routine. I mean, I'm not even a you know group guy, but I actually enjoyed this. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's, it's a networking. I mean, sometimes people come. It's more, and it's more for do for the intro, right? And then just sit and hang. And then normally we go to breakfast after. That's why I said you guys got to organize this shit yourself yep. today. Uh, but good. really, it's I, just, like this, I like this podcast. I think you should have everyone on it. I, you so know, like I was thinking about that today. I right. Fun. It's good. We'll send you a bill. Send you a bill. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think so. We did a, um, we used to do a, a segment called the Veteran Spotlight, and we need to get back into it because now we have veterans at our disposal. Right, all the just time. drag them in here and do it quick, and uh, and do that. We'd sit down with them and we'd we'd ask them five or six questions about their life and their career and what they're doing now, and and we'd get some interesting answers and interesting feedback. I was watching some of them on our channel the other day, uh, the one with Juan, Juan, and I was like, man, that was that was like really really fun for us. Like we both of us, we looked like really happy doing it too. And I was like, we need to get back to that. So we'll do that. Yeah. Angelo, what do you got, man? Final thoughts? You're sitting in that corner the whole time. Final thoughts. Uh, gosh. Arthur, one, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I loved hearing just from your perspective because it really does change a lot of what we talk about in, in a different way. Um, but uh, two, uh, final thought would be, you know, where are you making – what is your purpose? What are you doing that is attributing to your purpose-driven life? And Telling that's... stories of people who are marginalized, of people who feel ignored, um, of people who have been bastardized. That was the reason why I came here. And I mean, I'm living it every day. I love it. I love it's it. Every that's... single day. You guys don't understand. And I mean, I think now people are starting to recognize it. I, this week, I got more fan mail than I've ever gotten in my life, ever. And I started sending them to my boss. I was like, "Here, here, here's more." Oh here. yeah, because I, I want to raise. Like, yeah. And I mean, even even my top boss said, "Did you see what he wrote?" And I was like, "Yeah," because like, the one person, yeah, he he owns a nonprofit. But he, he, man, he really put it together, and he brought up God. That's the thing. Oh. You know, it was the same way with um, Todd Shoemaker. I want to give a, a shout out to him as well. Um, I don't know, two weeks on the job, there's an author. Todd Shoemaker used to be a um, juvenile justice guard. Or... I'm, okay. not, I'm not from that one. Sure. So I'm trying to give you his title. Um, and so what happened was he got hit with uh, MS. Oh. Yeah. And um, lost his, his function, lost his legs. And used to be a runner. And so he wrote a book, um, you know, The Blessed Overcomer, amazing book on how to regain your identity when your identity has been taken away from you. And now he's running. Believe it or not, listen to that. You see? You know, usually when you get MS, you go away. Yeah, right. that's it. You deteriorate. Yep. No, he came back. He, he remarried. Amazing life. Wow. You know, amazing story. And I mean, he's all about Christ. And I just love his story, but he actually wrote the book and then he sent me a copy and he said, you know, me and my wife, Laura, were talking, you don't know me. 
but he was like, I think that guy's a believer. I want him to get a copy of my book. That's awesome. Oh. That was two weeks on the job. That's awesome. I, that's a perfect driven line. I'm sorry. That's, I'm sorry. I just, I'm just doing my job. And right. I love that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Angelo. Good. Yeah, we're good. Cool. We're Guys, good. if you love listening <laughs> and watching our podcast, make sure you subscribe. iTunes, Google, you play, uh, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, basically wherever you can listen or watch a podcast, we'll be there hanging out every single week. Arthur, thanks so much again Thank for you. coming out. Where can everybody find you on the internet, man, on social media? WPTV.com. Boom. Facebook. There's only one Arthur Mondale, and then Twitter. Perfect. Same yeah. name, Arthur Mondale, yeah, the whole nine. No IG. The one and only. <laughs> the one and only. The one and only Arthur Mondale. <laughs> Until next time, we're out. Semper Fi. Kill. Air power. Okay. We hit end live stream there. <laughs> can you get a picture of us right here? Here's my phone. Thank you. Did you hit it? Just call me on Facebook Messenger. Yep. Hit. Let me, all right, leave it there. Weird. Thank y'all for staying. Yeah, that was huge. <laughs> Thank y'all for staying.